Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is League Unlock. We are back. Day two action for the Swiss stage. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. We got had it all today. We have the Civil Wars taking place. We got 10K gold comebacks. We got throws. We got wombo combos. And we got to start with the best game of the day. I'm hard pressed to think of finding a better game in the entire tournament. We're talking G2 versus Weibo. You thought the highlight or low light, depending on what team you like, would be G2 throwing at Baron again, but that was only the beginning of the drama for this game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wasn't day two supposed to be boring? Didn't everyone hate seeing these matches come across? And they didn't see, of course, this gem waiting for us. G2 versus Weibo Gaming. Yes, the Baron throw is only the beginning because you got a major advantage. Early game, mid game, getting carved up by Weibo Gaming, picking up that gold. And then, yes, there is a Wombo combo. Dial up the Faker, Oriana. We got another one to shove into the highlight reel. It's even with the Rakan getting in there, Mickey getting things started. Some of uh, Weibo kind of jump into this engage that nets a couple kills and then G2 gets back into the game. But even after that team fight, it was a long road back. And G2 is pretty much the only Western team that over the last five plus years, you can talk about out team fighting an LPL team, even when they already have Mountain Soul, but mechanically all five players for G2 in some of these team fights were absolutely out of this world. And we're not talking about doing it once, not even twice. We're talking about three or four separate times in this game. G2 finds a way to out team fight this Weibo gaming team, a team that we know when that team fight starts popping off, if they're in that position, they're really gonna be a team that is hitting it on all cylinders and G2 is the one that best they find a way to get out top. And the thing is, even after all that stuff and even after that wombo combo greatness, you still needed that game saving alt coming through from that Yone on Broken Blade. Now we're talking about BB, a man who has been on a career with the nine man TSM sleep coming all the way through to make a big play on the world stage. Oh, I, he's looking at two ends of the spectrum here, that 2020 TSM and what G2 is putting together right now. But that final team fight, I mean, you have Hansama gets caught out, pops the cleanse instantly. Then that Kaisa missile just barely tags him to send him into GA. But the sequence after that is played to absolute perfection out of Hansama with the timing on his ulti and then the flash and then as you mentioned, BB absolutely saving the day, interrupting that by Q. Cap's immaculate Oriana performance in all these team fights as well. He looked like it was Faker Pilot in that thing. There's a thing in, you know, kind of the mental psyche, you know, understanding and study of sports and science is knowing about the zone. It's this area where your brain just goes into kind of that autopilot, that ultra instinct, where you just know what you're gonna do next and you perform it to that excellent level. That's what I think is going on with this G2. They look so comfortable at this event, finally at an international event showing it like this. I think if I told you, you go back you know, a year or two ago, we're in the old format, you're in your groups, and I say G2 takes care of business against the LPL, takes care of business against the LCK, and are off to this 2-0 hot start, you'd be going bananas hearing about that. Yeah, I feel like they're getting less respect just because they are the fourth seeds that they've played so far but people are coming too because Weibo looked really good in that first matchup against NRG and I'm feeling fantastic about G2 going forward being competitive against legitimately any team at this tournament we were saying the same about both T1 and Gen G, the beginning first Civil War matchup we'll get to. Things were looking great early for T1. They got first blood for Faker. They're kind of controlling how all the lanes are going. But you would think they would have learned in the LCK summer what to do. And to be wary of Rakan Delights. Rakan specifically because it's another team fight. An ace for Gen G. One fight that completely turns this game on its head. I get bullied by that guy talking that much trash. I'm not talking about Delight talking trash. I'm talking about Rakan in game. Can't, can't seem to shut up. These guys, how do you not sleep 
when you got this player on your team waiting to come through and make that damage happen yes the light makes it all happen he sets it up for gen g you got everybody on gen g getting in on that action yes you had peanut making uh, you know kind of a, a little bit of a, a display against owner and then even more so of a display is doran up in that top side against zeus he just seems to always have his number his ability to contain and neutralize the carry effect that zeus is supposed to bring to t1 yeah another atrox game that just has basically no impact on the match whereas doran yeah was camping bushes getting solo kills completely zoning out half the team during a lot of these team fights also got a highlight uh, an immaculate Akali performance from Chovy. He got a little behind in lane as expected, but he looks like a man on a mission at this world. He's not messing around. It, it's very focused is what you can kind of already see and sense from Chovy at this point. There is almost this level of confidence that has brewed up with this Gen G team. And it's not this overconfidence, but it's that kind of that puffing that chest out and finally realizing and coming out of the T1 shadow that is that whole organization and history of it by going, hey, back to back to back LCK championships. We have earned this type of pedigree and stance. Let's show what type of stuff we can do on the Rift. You see it with Chovy leading the charge, the rest of the team backing it up showing that they still got T1's number and they should still be right up there as that second main threat to win this entire event. Problem is, the main threat to win the whole thing is just doing more of the same. You know, Gen G has had T1's number in summer. JDG has had every single number BLG could possibly think of. I don't know why I thought this one would be more competitive, a new stage, new place, but... It was more of the same absolute domination from JDG. Usually someone locks in Callista and I'm, ah, uh, hands in my head, but uh, Ruler looks pretty good on it. Shock. Uh, man, find whatever horror story it is. I, whatever monster this type of thing is, you guys got to tell me. What happens when you move away? All these new places, as you said, new venue, doesn't matter. You're still sleeping and checking under your bed and there's the JDG monster waiting to take your lunch money, BLG. Yes, sir. Just like all the other times we've seen in the LPL, even with, you know, a little bit going right for BLG, it's only a matter of time before Ruler and the rest of the JD crew lay down the beat down. The only silver lining I have here for BLG is hopefully now they've dodged JDG in at least the best of threes. <laughs> hopefully maybe quarters they won't have to play them. Uh, if they play them again, they'll have already had a deep run in the tournament. There, you're right. And I think that has to be the only silver lining because you're not necessarily looking at the play and that's not meant to be some overly harsh thing. It is really just more so about, again, another layer of JDG going, we're just better than you. We're better than you at all your positions. We're better at how to play the game, all these things. And they take that W with them. As you said, if you are BLG, you got to say maybe something else happens out there in the cosmos and someone else can take down JDG and our path to that championship is without it, that could be the ticket for them to find the ultimate prize. Problem is, I think everyone at that event is saying the same thing. I hope <laughs> someone else takes out JDG because I don't want it. Yeah, well, hey, look, you're looking at, again, the Gen Gs, the LNGs, of course, the only two teams that I think we can comparably put into that elite category, even understanding how far ahead JDG is. We got a repeat from day one, and that is an LCS team playing a competitive game against a team that's much better than them and having it just slip away despite them even getting a Baron their way. Cloud9 versus LNG actually had a clean Baron take. It wasn't a flip. It was fully in their control. But again, it's one single team fight. Tarzan hops in to find this engage and... Berserk, as he engages, Berserker is diving the back line to try and kill Gala. It becomes all out of sorts and ends up being a bunch of kills over to LNG. And then that's it. Scouts his ears online. Game over. Three man Tarzan Lee Sin kick right in to the three man Jax counter stun. Oh my God. I hate it. I hate it so much seeing that come through. And as you mentioned before, this is all on the backs of a very clean non-North American burger flip. We're eating veggies over here with the Baron. It was no problem coming out of that 
a scout will call it tactical pause for cloud nine to reset things they get it and then things are looking okay they you know get themselves in position and you just push that envelope a little bit too far at that second tower trying to get you know a bigger fight bigger win for yourself and yes the team gets separated you let that happen you get that big play you're still relatively in it cloud nine makes the second crucial mistake and that is a miscalculation on how much damage they're out to do in the amount of time when they make this engage in that mid lane you know right around that river bush and they try and get onto gala can't pop him fast enough every millisecond that Gala is staying alive longer than he needs to is more time for Scout's Azir to dish out that damage, the rest of LNG to get in action. And unfortunately, even if you take a couple more of those seconds, you get Gala, it didn't matter because the rest of that equation has come through from LNG and they're in power. And then from that point onwards, there was nothing left for Cloud9 to do. And I know people are harping on the decision to give a lot of attention to Fudge in the early game. But listen, the early game went fine for Cloud9. There they were, even to a head by the time they got that Baron. The problem here for Cloud9 going forward, of course, is just, you know, typical LCS macro, always an issue internationally. But if Jimenez doesn't level up, I don't see how Cloud9 is going to be able to get wins out of any of the top half of teams at this event. That has been the other unfortunate thing that you got to look at because even with, you know, the performance against the Mad Lions, you're still looking at this one and that's two in a row where you are clearly saying that this is either A, an issue because of just straight up that matchup disadvantage that you're at or individually you're just seeing that this guy is not at this type of level that is going to compete with the rest of this roster right now to help push up to that type of level. I think this second game is even tougher individually on his performance. There is enough to say about, you know, that Syndra not being involved in that team fight in some type of way. And part of that is yes, on the team playing around Syndra and her, you know, lack of movement in these points and onwards, but it's also, you know, that's draft and identifying, well, we've got all these champions that are going to just dive on in and get in there in one little bit. And then Seer Syndra just floating along by trying to get there. Can't do anything and can't position in that team fight. Yes, individually, a menace needs to be better. That is another thing to look at with this. For Cloud9, it certainly is one of those ones where there's the positives. There's the good that you see that you can contend. You can get these advantages. You can pull the trigger aggressively and make these plays happen. You also can make these mistakes. That is throwing it away and giving your, champ, your opponents any little bit of opportunities. And unfortunately, LPL, LCK teams, they need way less opportunities than we do to make that comeback happen. And that's the age old problem with the LCS is domestically, you can make these type of mistakes and you're not gonna be punished. So it's harder to learn from them. Then you get on the big stage, you make a single one of those mistakes and you end up losing the game. Luckily for Amenez, he didn't have the worst Cinder performance on the day because before <laughs> oh, oh, him, no. God bless poor APA 0, 9, and 3. Palafox and NRG looked angry after getting stomped by Weibo. They got that little bit of home cooking buff going up against another LCS team because they dismantled them. We saw this in, in the other series too, and we'll talk about it. That is these domestic matchups. It was almost a reset on that focus on the meta and everything else of just realizing, hey, we play against these guys all the time. We know what to do against them. We know how to prepare. We know what we like against them, all these type of things. And it really did just look kind of like an elevated LCS, elevated LEC game, obviously with the attention, the venue, everything else. But the gameplay, the, the philosophy, the fundamentals, the confidence, those are all the things you recognize from playing against each other. And you saw it in this from NRG instantly going, yeah, that was a beat down at the hands of the Shy and the rest of Weibo. We get a nice little reset. We've beaten Team Liquid before. We know exactly what to do. We are the LCS Summer Champions. Let's show it. They showed it, my man. And listen, Team Liquid, their reaction to this draw getting NRG. Team was happy. They're clapping. Obviously, it's a better option than a lot of the other ones, but it doesn't look so good now because, yeah, they got completely smashed across the board. That other Civil War matchup you mentioned, Mad Lions versus BDS, it wasn't as big a stomp, but yeah, Mad Lions looking much more comfortable. They right away say Olaf, Darius, Garen, none of it. Adam, you're stuck on croc duty on the Renekton, and despite the very best efforts out of Nuke on Azir, it is Mad Lions avoiding that O2 Schneid. Uh, those are the important notes to hit and talk about this one is number one, yes, doing your homework, realizing, hey, 
What is everyone else missing here? We've played against this team all the time. Ban the gods. Ban out the Garen. Ban that Darius. Ban that Olaf. Get them out of here. Make Adam beat us with the stupid Renekton that's all the way over here and what he's been doing. I don't want. I don't even want to know what Renekton's record is at this event. It can't it's be good. It's definitely double digit losses deep into it by now. I only remember checking in on day two when it was one and eight. So I'm sure it's not doing any better right now. And then, yes, you have to look at the the you know strategy just set out right the gate the aggressiveness of el yoya recognizing i know how to punish how to take advantage how to exert that i am the alpha jungle from my region let me show you what it's like to be here and even mad lions dialing it up an extra not notch and saying okay yeah we'll give over the lasandra the niski to that extra easy bit of comfort setting it up with that carry in the jungle and that more support in the mid lane mad lions dial it up just right and yes there is nuke to talk about because i think out of all the players on bds he has absolutely been someone that has stepped up between the play and stage the level that he is playing at and contributing for the team I, I gotta look at it again a couple other times i swear that azir alt gets karzy i don't know how he gets out of it if it's out of the way I mean, whatever it was a pixel it, it was a pixel it must have missed by I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think my man got done dirty. Nuke, fantastic job. Really tough to see. Obviously, the, it all for a losing effort, but you know, still got to find a way to pick yourself up off that mat. Yeah, if that alt does hit, I mean, he probably gets two extra kills. That team fight goes completely differently. The game goes com completely differently. Just shows how close things can come down uh, to these games. But yeah, now BDS down to 0 and 2. Mad Lions drop into that one and one bracket. Another EU team avoided that O2 spot. That was Fnatic matching up against Gam. We got an Umanoid sighting and we got Noah not on Ezreal. That's what everyone's happy about. Yes, yes, yes. This should be a good one for the Fnatic faithful. Memory wipe. LNG. Out of here. The only thing you got to remember from that LNG game is oh, Zero's a pretty good champion. <laughs> and yes, your man humanoid can be pretty darn lethal on the shifting sands. Love this game from Fnatic, a really good confidence bounce back. I think there was still a little bit of pushback coming through and maybe you know, a mistake here or there that did lead to a little bit of a punch, a little bit of a needle from a gam coming across. Overall though, you look at a controlled game, a controlled clean quick win from this Fnatic squad to get that bounce back at Worlds. The fastest game of the day, even faster than JDG beating up on BLG. Obviously, different levels of opponent when you're doing yes. it against <laughs> yeah. BLG versus GAM. But yeah, clean for Fnatic to move to one and one. And then the last Civil War we had, D plus versus KT rules through the unfortunate 0 1 matchup. And immediately when you hit the rip with this one, I'm scratching my head because I see a Ziggs Leona bot lane and a Ziggs for death. And I'm wondering what's going on, Mark. Hey, look, I love, I love the cooking. It, it ain't smelling so good though, my <laughs> man. That ain't the type of cooking I want in my kitchen. All the experiments, yes, bring them on. This one's a failure. This one's an X right out of the gates. We're seeing this one. I don't know what meta, you know, how many patches ago we got to turn back to find when this is an effective combo right now. And especially with what was available still, that wasn't my option. Yeah, it, it, it didn't really uh, make sense. Obviously, never really got to be online where Death was actually doing any meaningful amount of damage. And heading now into the best of threes for D plus down at 0 2, you got to be summoned in Bible, right? Because Kellen has two, had two, maybe the two worst support performances in back to back days. He's looked all sorts of out of sync, and especially then even on that individual level, I'm not seeing that performance, that recognition. I think that this is certainly one of those options where it is in the team's best interest, player's best interest, to make this type of swap, to find, you know, you can, it doesn't mean that this needs to be the permanent one type of thing, but at the very least, needs to happen, is the way that you are looking at this type of move for DK, and especially in that situation, as we now realize, you've got nowhere to fall. The only place that you're falling is falling out of this tournament if you do drop one more time. Yeah, so immediately they do the draw for day three, and this is where stuff starts getting real spicy because if you're zero and two or two and zero, oh, you're into the best of three stage. And we start with those zero oh and twos. D plus drawing BDS in that matchup, do or die. TL got the lucky straw on this one. They're matching up against Gam. Obviously now 
these 0-2 squads, if they want any chance of getting to quarterfinals, it's three best of threes in a row that they're going to have to win. Oh, yes, sir. It's starting to heat up at the Swiss stage. Yes, this is exactly what we love about it and how it's going to shape things up. Big time win for Team Liquid getting the Gigabyte Marines. And, you know, I'm going to say that before the Marines make history again and find a way to take down the LCS. Oh, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Gam wins, by the way. But, but without question, this was the softer landing for Team Liquid and a sure. better opportunity to find your form, to figure it out, and get at least another matchup ahead of you. And on the other side, looking at DK and BDS, I think this still is more than possible, I think, for BDS, more so than people are kind of making that initial judgment of LCK, LEC. Ah, it's always going to be the LCK type of thing. Got to give credit if, B if, if uh, you know, if you're looking at DK and they're not doing their homework, they're not paying attention to what Mad Lions was banning out and that type of stuff. You're going to see Adam be a problem for Kana, be a problem for the rest of that DK team to deal with. That's going to be important to look at. The only thing that I am worried about on this side for BDS is a little bit of a repeat of what we saw El Yoya do to Shea. Canyon can dial that notch up a couple more times, so got to be careful about that. And there's a lot more picks than the Belveth that Canyon's able to do that on. But he could do it on Belveth as well. This dude could do it on pretty much any champion. Uh, all the way up to the 2-0 squads, who again, also best of three. If you win that best of three, boom, into top eight, sitting pretty. This is the only Civil War matchup, LNG versus JDG, a rematch of the back-to-back -back five game series from summer. JDG's gotta be looking at BLG then LNG and saying, is this Worlds? It just feels like LPL Summer Part 2. Ruler's going to be going to the doctor, getting his eyes checked. It's like, man, I'm just seeing these same num little letters above all these things. I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's the situation. If there was any domestic civil war that we were going to get into this next round, into these best of three situations, this is the one you want. LNG versus JDG rematch, as you said. Summer Finals. And even better, but well, we've had a little bit of time since then. Things have fluctuated, different meta as well. Dial me up it again. Give me those five games. Let's get let's get it going. Five games, three games, I don't care. Slide it up. Give me the full match distance. And the other side, you know, if you're going to go LPL, LPL, that means we are blessed with a G2 Gen G matchup. Chovy versus Caps. Peak Doran versus a Yone out of Broken Blade. You can go top to bottom. Every matchup here is a spicy one. You, come on, Hansama versus Pays. Give me some of that. And then, oh, a nice, crisp, cool veteran peanut against the youngster. Yike. Oh, yes. This is fantastic. And then that's even before the waiter comes over to your table with the hot sauce bottles of Mr. Delight and Mickey. Yes, this is exactly. Probably the two best supports so far at the event, by the way. Oh, yes, you better believe it. This is going to be one hell of a showdown, one hell of a match. And as we talked about earlier with G2, I don't think they're getting the right amount of praise. And this is being cautious still, not want to go over the top. Right amount of praise for what they have done and how they have executed at this tournament. Any other year, we're going, oh, my goodness. Yes, they took care of business. This is the team to be proud of. They beat the LCK. They beat the LPL. This is the team to be proud of. Definitely be betting yourself on G2. This is going to be a tough matchup, tough competition against, again, back to back to back. How many times can I say that? LCK champions in Gen G, but this should be a thrilling series. Then we look quickly at the one and one matchups, which are not best of three yet. Once you get to two wins or two losses is when the best of three start rolling around. Mad Lions draw another NA team matching up against NRG, hopefully. LCS come out ahead on that one as well. Totally unbiased on that one. Uh, Oscar Rinnan gets a very quick level up going now against Bin on the top side in that BLG matchup where BLG will be big favorites. Weibo versus KT feel like KT slight favorites, but that one's pretty much 50-50. And then it wouldn't be Worlds without a T1-C9 matchup, right? Oh, we can't escape it. No, sorry. Berserker's got to have a matchup against Faker and the rest of T1. Going to need some some big heroics, I'm feeling, from Cloud9 yeah. to dial this one up. This is going to be a T1 that is angry and refocused after getting bounced out 
by Gen G. The rest of these matchups are fantastic as you laid out. Oscar and having to go up against Ben, that is a scary one for this young player, but absolutely an opportunity to prove yourself, make more of a name, build up that lore of how you're doing in that top side. These matchups are going to be fun. Again, I we said it yesterday, day two, even if domestic ones weren't your favorite thing, setting up for day three and day four were going to be unreal. And that's the beauty of this format is every day, it just gets hype. More hype, more hype, higher stakes. Every game matters, but they matter more and more now that they are becoming elimination. We'll be back on Monday to recap all that weekend action, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.